Hello, everybody. Welcome to Not So Average with Sean Wilson. I am Sean Wilson. I'm an actress in Hollywood and I make content dedicated to encouraging you to pursue your dreams. If you've been here before, welcome black. I almost said welcome black. <laughs> If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you are brand new, welcome white. I don't know. I don't even know why I said that. I probably shouldn't have said that. I mean, I know why I said it. We all know why I said it because it's like a play on the welcome black slip up that I made. And listen, all right, now I feel compelled to say that this podcast is for everyone, regardless of ethnicity, uh, gender, sexual orientation, religion, creed, blah, 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 blah. Um, nationality you know what country you're in it it was a slip of the tongue that has now gone out of control so i'm gonna stop this right now we are going to move forward today we are going to talk about why your childhood dream won't come true no matter how hard you try now that sounds serious that sounds um defeatist that sounds oh god there's a word i'm looking for that also starts with d and i can't dire 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 right it sounds all those things but it's not it's actually quite quite hopeful of course it is because that's what i do i bring you the sunny side of the equation the sunny outlook, the sunny perspective, the positive way to approach what it is you are experiencing in your life that may or may not be keeping you from your dreams. So um, yeah, I just feel the need to say quite clearly and honestly that this podcast, this episode of the podcast, I should say, this episode is not for everyone, okay? Some people are going to just hear me say your childhood dream won't come true. You're going to get hung up on that half of the phrase and miss the rest of the message. I would like to encourage you to stick around anyway um, because I'm not saying you can't realize dreams. I hope that you will get my bigger message. For those of you who don't get triggered by hearing that you can't do something or you won't be able to do something, uh, this message is definitely for you. Though, as I said before, I feel everybody can benefit from it. So let me go ahead and explain because I feel like I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Hey guys, it's Sean. Remember to comment, follow, and share. <laughs> Why your childhood dream won't come true no matter how hard you try. It's this simple. You're not a child. You're not a child. Not only are you not a child, you're not the child you were when you first came up with this dream. So I had this realization for myself recently and it was quite freeing. So of course, because it was freeing for me, my first instinct was, hey, I need to share this with my peeps. Here's what happens. When you're a little kid, you have something that uh, interests you something that you're excited about. And you look at it from a child's perspective. You don't have the furthest idea, the furthest, that's not right, the foggiest. You don't have the foggiest clue how to make that dream into a reality. Shoot, you don't even know how to make dinner yet. <laughs> Let alone manifest goals and dreams, pursue goals and dreams, achieve goals and dreams. All you know is that you wanna be a fireman. Or you want to be Whitney Houston. Or you want to be an astronaut. You want to be um, a chef. I don't know how many kids go, I want to be a chef. But, you know, I have heard kids here in Los Angeles say that they wanted to be a photojournalist. This is like a six-year-old. I'm like, what the hell do you know about photojournalism? It's a different breed of kid out here, y'all, I got to tell you. <laughs> anyway, so as a child, you make a decision. And what I want to do with today's episode is I want to give you permission to free yourself from that decision. For some of us, we are trying to achieve something that we came up with before we knew anything about living life at all. And we feel like failures or we feel stuck because we haven't been able to make it come true. And the reason why you haven't been able to make it come true may simply be that it's really not what you want anymore. You're just used to thinking that it's what you want. You made the decision at age six, seven, eight, 12 even, 16, whatever. 
But you're not that 16-year-old anymore. You're not that 12-year-old anymore. You're not that 6 or 8-year-old anymore. And you actually deep down inside want something different than the thing that you have been feeling compelled to continue to try to attain. I sound really preachery right now, don't I? Anyway, um, (laughs) so that's the first reason why no matter how hard you try, sometimes the childhood dream won't come true. It's not really what you want anymore. And I don't know exactly how energetics work. I don't know exactly how the spirit works, but I do know that our spirit, our soul, our mind, whatever you want to call it, won't let you do something that is not in your own best interest for very long. You might be able to do it for a short amount of time, but not for anything that's lasting. You know, we see this when we make bad relationship decisions, when we know this person is terrible to us, but we stay with them anyway. That shit don't last. It don't last. Because your brain won't let you continue to hurt yourself. Your brain won't let you continue to put yourself in situations that don't uh, work for you or or let you stay in situations that don't work for you um, or benefit you. This is why you can be in a job that you think makes you a lot of money or you think, well, I mean, you don't think, you know whether or not it makes you a lot of money, but a job that makes you a lot of money or a job that you think is the right step for you to take right now to get to where you want to be ultimately, but you and that manager just don't get along or you and that director just don't see eye to eye or whatever the thing is. And so you keep trying to stay in alignment with this person, this job, the agenda over there but you keep popping off and you keep popping off because it's not in alignment with who you are and what you really need. The same thing can be true about our dreams. So you made a decision as a child. In some cases, like my own, you started trying to pursue it as early as childhood. For some people, you don't even try to start to pursue it until you're a full-grown adult. And and at that point, not only do you have new wants, needs, and desires, but you also have responsibilities that you didn't have when you were that child making that decision. And we cannot help but factor in our responsibilities, whether they're responsibilities to ourselves or to others, when we are making choices about today when we are taking actions today, because it's part of the whole package. It's part of who we are. So again, one reason, the first reason why you won't achieve that dream, no matter how hard you try, that childhood dream, no matter how hard you try, is because you're simply, you're not a child and you're not that child anymore. Um, And then the second reason why you may not. Yeah, I'm getting kind of like soft in my language because I don't I don't like the feeling of discouraging people. <laughs> and so it's it's hard for me to continue saying why you won't. So I'm going to now shift it a little bit and say why you may not achieve your childhood dream or why, why your childhood that that's how I want to say it. The second reason why your childhood dream won't come true no matter how hard you try is because It's not for you. Because though you were, a lot of times, and and I'm guilty of this myself, a lot of times when we talk about our childhood, we think of that as our authentic self, our real self before conditioning kicked in, right? But depending on what your home situation was like, by the time you, even as a child, have uh, identified a dream or a desire, you may have already been severely affected by the circumstances of your life. So sometimes the dream that we come up with as children is born out of hurt, trauma, pain, negative experiences that we had as children. And so the decision to do or become a certain thing may actually be the result of an adversity that we have um, experienced. And so it's like a part of you has branched off in a direction that is not in alignment with the true self or the soul or the spirit, whatever you want to call it. And you've been making decisions and going forward, taking steps based on that branched off side. 
And the real you, the true you, the heart of you is not the one leading the way. And if you're a person who is open to and believes in healing your personal hurts the way that I am, what you may find as you do uh, your inner work, whether it's inner child work or it is shadow work or, you know, whatever you feel called to do. For some of us, it's it's both of those things plus more um, is you will start to discover parts of yourself that you didn't realize were there. Or you may start to discover or, or sorry, uncover parts of yourself that you forgot about. And with that comes a set of desires that are new to you now. I hope I've said that in a way that's clear. If I haven't, feel free to tell me in whatever, like whatever platform you use to listen to the podcast. Um, hopefully there's a comment section. And if there is, let me know if you need clarification on something. I'm happy to revisit things in, in future episodes. But um, what I'm trying to say is as you heal and you become a different flower, a different version of yourself, what you want and need is going to be reflective of that. And for many of us, because it's healing that's led to this, it's going to be the thing that truly is aligned with us, that truly does connect with our spirit. If you are into astrology at all, I am a little bit, I want to learn more. I don't know a ton about it, but I do know about the North Node versus the South Node. And again, I don't know a lot about it, but the North Node is, um, it's the part of the astrological chart that tells you what karmic direction to go into in this life go towards in this life. If my friend Amanda is listening to this in in you and I'm and I'm and I'm getting it a little bit confused, please feel free to to type in the comments there, you know, how I can better explain this to people. But what I'm trying to say is there is something that is a uh, part of us at birth that is like our mission or destiny or calling. And it's the North Node. And a lot of people don't know about it. It Most people, I would say, probably don't know about it. And a lot of people don't um, know to direct their energies towards that. They're making decisions. We are making decisions based on what someone said to us, what someone told us, or what we thought we wanted for ourselves and we might even successfully pursue that thing and achieve that thing and and let me rephrase what I'm trying to say there we might have some success in it but not feel fulfillment in doing that work we may be super gifted at the thing if you heard that noise that's not my stomach that's my cat he's nearby and he just he just (laughs) made some kind of old man sound in his sleep as he stretched. (laughs) Sorry about that. But anyway, um, there is uh, sometimes success in the thing because there is a skill set there, whether it's an inherent skill set or a skill set that we developed through training and education and practice, lots and lots and lots of practice. And so you you get a modicum of success in that thing, maybe even riches from it, but you don't feel fulfilled. The feeling of fulfillment comes when we are doing the thing or being the thing that is in alignment with or reflected by what our North Node tells us in our astrological chart. So I um, I brought that up because, because, again, sometimes we're doing something And it's not the right thing for us. And sometimes that decision was made when we were children, whether it was our own desire to be the fireman or Whitney Houston or the astronaut or whatever, or because some well-meaning teacher in a class that our parents chose to put us in saw that we were picking up on the skill set really fast and 
said that that's what we should do with our lives. And then we moved forward with that. So it's not that I'm saying with this episode, oh, you won't do the thing you wanted to do as a child. You may be someone who does it and it works just fine and it brings you fulfillment. See, that's the Holy Grail. Some people have that experience. But the reason why I wanted to do this episode today and why I titled it the way I did and approached it from the beginning the way I have is because for a lot of people, there's a feeling of frustration about the childhood dream, whether it's that you've been trying and it's not working or you haven't even given it a a try yet and you feel bad about yourself for not taking any steps towards it. And if you're in that second camp, I want to tell you to give yourself permission. I didn't say that right. Let me try it again. What I'm trying to say is I want to tell, I want to, I want to invite you to forgive yourself for not realizing your childhood dream. And maybe as a thought experiment, because you guys know I love giving you thought experiments to do. Maybe as a thought experiment, imagine, spend some time more than once Imagining what your life would be like right now if you were living that particular dream and imagine it from a place of the reality of that dream, not just, oh, I just placed, uh, I just got the goal in the Olympics and everyone's cheering. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the pinnacle, (laughs) right? But all the steps that come before that. All the things you have to do before you get to the gold medal. Is that something you would want for yourself right now? Is that something that you would have wanted to experience over the past 10 to 20 years? And if it is, and you're still excited about it, then find some way to do some version of it. Some version of it. So if it is, you know, that you had hoped to be an Olympic swimmer, but, you know, now you are clearly not of an age where that is a possibility find another way to be a competitive swimmer and if there like it could even be a seniors competitive swimming league and if that doesn't exist where you live you be the one to start it for some of us we'll do this thought experiment and we'll realize that oh you know what that that life that set of circumstances isn't really what i how i would want to spend my time now I'm just so used to thinking of it as my dream because I started dreaming about it as a child. And it's been as much a part of my identity as the color of my eyes or my last name. So give yourself permission to take a look at that and make, um, I don't want to just say a new choice, but release it. If you feel called, if you feel like this wasn't the thing, release it. Don't let it hold you hostage. And I want you to release it so that you can give yourself the freedom to find a new dream. The freedom to find a new hope, a new goal. The thing that works with who you are today. My sisters, at least one of them, I'm not going to call you out the one that doesn't really listen to this podcast, but one of them watches it. And so, um, or listens to it. And my sisters and my mom, uh, maybe not my mom, but my sisters will definitely tell you, I am not the same person as I was 20 years ago. I'm, I grew up. (laughs) We do that, right? We grow, we grow and we change. We change and we grow because we get exposed to new things. We get exposed to things. We learn things. We experience things. Um, We have more information than you do as a child. Children know nothing. They're stupid by nature. So (laughs) don't hold yourself hostage to any decision that you made when you were little. Let it go. Or if it's still something that is in your heart to do, Forgive yourself for not having done it yet and find a way to approach doing it from who you are today and what your circumstances are today. 
So it might be the same activity or becoming the same thing, but look differently than you thought it would look. Uh, I don't think I need a LY on that. Look different. It will look different than it did when you were looking at it through a child's eyes. I have used the phrase childhood dream in the podcast several times, several times, and I might stop. I might stop. I don't know. I just feel like it can be um, a shackle for some of us. And a big part of this podcast is helping you to feel the sense of freedom to go after something that matters to you today. The third thing is, um, you know, trying very hard to reconcile or make right something from the childhood can keep you stuck. I can speak to that from personal experience. Trying very hard to get young Sean something can keep me from giving adult Sean what she needs right now. God, if only I could say everything so succinctly (laughs) that I don't even feel the need to expound on that. Trying to make the past right keeps you focused on the past and the past is gone. It's not coming back. Future has yet to be... uh, has yet to come into fruition. And here's the funny thing, it never will, because when you get to the future, it'll actually be your present. So your present is where you need to be focused. Find the joy in something that gives you hope and inspiration now, and let that be your new dream. Ask yourself, what do I want now? What would I like to have now? What do I want to do now? Who would I like to be now? And maybe there are some elements of your childhood self that you mix into the equation. But what you cannot do as a full-grown adult is be that child's version of anything. What, what that child conceptualize, you don't you can't do that. You can't do that because you're not you, because you just you know stuff now. You know stuff now, you've experienced life now. Not a child. You're not a child. You have wisdoms that hopefully help you make good decisions for yourself. Though some of us grow up and still do the same dumb shit over and over. Okay, so. (laughs) So, um, uh, God, I've talked for a long time already without giving you my example. I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to give it to you fast. It's like this. Back when I was in Charlotte, I used to watch... Inside the Actor's Studio. I think that was late 90s, mid to late 90s. I'm going to look it up really quickly while we're here in the podcast and see what the date on that show was. Yeah, okay, so that show debuted in 1994. And 1994 was two years before I graduated college. I can't believe I just said that out loud. And um, so I used to watch that show all the time. Uh, once I got out of college, I think I started watching it in 96 and I loved that show. It was so inspirational for me because you had these legendary actors who I looked up to, many of whom were the reason why I made the decision to become an actor in the first place. They were being interviewed by James Lipton and they were given all this insight into what their experience as professional actors has been, uh, including some of their experience before they became professionals. And definitely they talked about their time in the Legendary Actors Studio, um, as members of the Legendary Actors Studio. And, you know, the Actors Studio is located in New York for anybody who doesn't know. I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is, you know, a 13 hour drive from New York. So auditioning for and being a part of the Actors Studio, which is still in existence and still operational, um, does what was not a possibility for me. But then when I moved to Los Angeles, there is a um, the West Coast. I don't want to say version. That's not the right word. Division is also not the right word. I'm struggling with words today, people. I'm so sorry. Great for a podcast host. The uh, department. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, whatever it is, y'all know what I mean by now. Campus. (laughs) <laughs> there's the West Coast campus of the in, uh, the the actor's studio. And so when I first moved here in 2011, um, actually, no, I think it was maybe a couple years after that, 2013, I submitted 
application to the actor studio because I very much wanted to, I still wanted to become a member because its members include people like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Sean Penn. I'm so sorry that I'm only thinking off the top of my head of male actors and white male actors at that. Um, but there are a ton of legends. Just just Google it. Look it up. A ton of legends that were members of the actor studio um, way before there was a TV show attached to it, like from the 60s, 70s. Gene Hackman, again, white male. Dustin Hoffman, still with the white males. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so all these actors that I really looked up to and whose work I truly admire... Uh, it's lifetime membership. Harvey Keitel again with the white dudes. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to be a member. So in 2013, 2014, somewhere about that time, um, I think it was around the time I was doing Groundlings. So probably 2014, I applied, and I never heard back. And this is an institution, right? It's not like with auditions. When you audition for something and you don't hear back, that's how you know you didn't get the job. That's a cruel but true reality of being an actor. But this was an application to becoming a member. Being a member meant getting to take their classes and getting to use their facilities for, you know, rehearsing my own projects and working with other actors and rehearsing scenes and yada yada. And there was no response at all. So six to eight months later, however much time later, I reapplied again, you know, answered all the questions on the website, nothing, like not even a confirmation email. Okay, well, I moved on with my life. I did not internalize it. I didn't think, actually, I did think one thing of it. I was like, well, that's typical LA. Because unfortunately, I hate to say, I do feel like for the most part, when it comes to the running of businesses and institutions, Los Angeles is um, lacking compared to the East Coast. So then I go on with my life. I do the actor thing. I have some other experiences. And then just about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe, I got an email from the actor's studio here in Los Angeles inviting me to come and do the audition. So their process is that you apply and then you get invited to do the preliminary audition. And then after the preliminary preliminary, bleh, preliminary audition, you uh, do a second audition, and I believe it's at the second audition that it's determined whether or not you get to become a member. So just to recap, 20 fucking 14 was when I applied. This is 2022. (laughs) What is that? Eight years? That's eight years, you guys. And so when I got the um, email inviting me to come and audition, my first response was huh and then it was yay I get to be a member of the of the actor studio because of course me being me I assume I'm gonna get in and um and then it was "Mm, wait audition (laughs) like and auditioning is part of being an actor it will always be part of being an actor for the most part you know few of us get to the Nikki Kidman status where you are offer only Um, but, but it just, it felt like a hassle, but I knew that I had wanted this since the mid nineties. So I accepted the audition, answered the questions that they needed me to ask via that email in order to confirm my time slot, which was scheduled to be about three weeks away. And every once in a while, I'd be in my email after that, every once in a while, I'd be in my email and I would see it and I would constantly feel this, like this feeling in the pit of my stomach, like, ugh, I don't want to bother. That kept coming up for me. And then it would be, it's the actor studio and you really want to be a member of the actor studio. And so my desire to be among, you know, to be like, in the same fraternity, so to speak, as these uh, legendary actors that I've always looked up to. And uh, Sam Jackson, one of my favorite actors of all time. The the conflict between wanting that for myself and having wanted that for myself since the mid 90s and just not feeling now at the age that I am in the year that it is, like I wanted to audition to ask for a spot to to do what essentially would 
amount to taking more classes in LA. They just happened to be free. It just wasn't there. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I had already been through so much with the LA transition. I had already been demoted in so many ways from what I had been when I was in Charlotte. When I came here, man, did they teach me humility. These people were not even close to impressed by me and they didn't give a shit. And I rolled with it. I humbled myself. I jumped through their hoops. I did all the things that I'm supposed to do to start to get traction here. You know, in fact, one of my, one of the reasons why I initially did apply for the West Coast campus of Actors Studio uh, was not just because of the fulfillment of a childhood dream, but because I thought it would be a great way to keep, and it would have been a great way to uh, keep my skills sharp when I wasn't getting hired for things, because there are all these free act acting opportunities that are part of being a member. And then also I thought in terms of connecting with other actors and networking, you know, people hire you or refer you when they know you. And at the time I was such an unknown entity here. Nobody knew me, um, that nobody who could help me with the career knew me. And I wasn't even with a good, uh, talent rep yet at that time one that's got the traction to help the career like I am now. So guys, what I'm getting at, and I wasn't as quick about this as I thought I was going to be, what I'm getting at is the incentive to become a member that was there when I first looked into it. No, let me go back. The incentive to become a member that was there when I first learned about it in the mid nineties, that incentive was no longer there. The incentive to um, join that I had when I first applied in 2014, 2013, 2014, was no longer there. My needs as an adult human being were different than they were just eight years ago. I say just, but that's a long fucking time. Like they took their time, y'all. They took their time. Like the headshot that I submitted with at the time is not even applicable to what I look like now. So what I had to do, what I chose to do, after I kept seeing it pop up in my email, I kept seeing it, kept seeing it, and I would always have this feeling of not wanting to be bothered. I didn't want to go and find a scene to memorize for an audition to possibly, possibly become a member of the actor's studio and have to do two sets of auditions before I would even find out. Plus, it's like clear across on a different part of L.A. Like it was going to be so much work. And I know I sound lazy and I don't give a shit because y'all, I'm tired. I have been through it here. By the time you're an adult, you've been through it, period, whether it's L.A. or somewhere else. Right. And I I'm mindful of how I spend my time and my energy now, my resources, my personal resources, as well as my financial resources. I'm very mindful of that. And I did not feel that auditioning for it wasn't ready membership it was auditioning for the actor studio was something that I wanted to do anymore. And I knew I was letting go of a dream and I don't do that. I never let go of a dream. Never. But I knew that was in my best interest and looking beyond myself in the best interest for the institution and the other actor who would get to have my audition slot. And that's what I did. I wrote them and I, uh, I canceled the audition. I thanked them for the opportunity to audition for them, for giving me that opportunity. But I said that I wanted to release the slot and that they should feel free to give it to somebody else. And I hope that they do. I hope that they did. I hope that that person's already auditioned and passed their preliminary. Um, because I think that audition was supposed to be last week. So I wanted to share that with you guys as an example of how sometimes that which we want for ourselves when we're younger, just it's not a fit anymore. And you got to give yourself the permission to move on. Does it make me not an actor anymore? Hells no, nah, I got to pay my bills. Yeah, I'm still an actor. I'm just not achieving that particular dream as an actor. And that's all right. Okay, I want to leave you guys with some. Uh, um, uh, hold on one second. If you hear the clicking, that's my computer as I navigate to a different program. 
So as we already talked about, definitely, you know, figure out for yourself, what do you want now? What do you want now? Let yourself figure that out. And the default for for many of us is to go back to what we wanted back then. Let that have its space. Let that have its word. You know, let that inner child yammer on because she wants to be heard or he wants to be heard. But go, okay. And then in addition to that, what else would I like? And figure out for yourself what the other thing is. And after a while, you'll be able to let go of the thing that no longer serves you. At first, it you know, that part of your brain might want to keep holding on to the old dream. So instead of like trying to eradicate it or throw it out or shame that part of yourself, go, yes, yes, I remember that I wanted that. And uh, what else would I like now? What am I interested in now? That'll help you move forward. Um, some steps to move forward. I'm going to give you an alert real quick that this is going to be somewhat esoteric for some of you. For some of you, it's right in your wheelhouse because you're like me, you're creative, you're intuitive, you like this kind of thing. For some of you, it's going to feel kind of weird. Take what you like, leave the rest behind. So the steps for moving forward, the first one that I want to give you is it it goes along the lines of what I just said. And it's uh, it's, you got you have to acknowledge that inner child. You have to acknowledge that part of you that wanted something different than what you are interested in now or capable of doing now. Okay, so ask your inner child for forgiveness for not being able to make her dream come true. That part of your brain that we attribute to inner child is um, it's still you. It's it's you. And so you have to reconcile the two parts of yourself so that they can work in harmony with each other and not be in conflict. A lot of what keeps us from achieving or pursuing our dreams is constant inner conflict. So ask her for forgiveness. And you may have to ask her several times, just like with relationships we have with other people. We can ask someone for forgiveness and they say they give it to us, but it may take them a while to actually function with us as though we have not hurt them. Or or flip it around if it's easier for you to understand where you're the person who has been wronged. Okay. Someone has done something to you that hurts. Uh, let you down, disappointed you, and they ask your forgiveness or they make an amends in whatever way and you try and, and you say to them, yeah, I forgive you, but it's it's still there for a long time until you have a series of um, healthier, better interactions with this person. It's still there. So you might have to, it, it, until eventually one day, hopefully it's not. So you may have to ask your inner child for forgiveness many times, many times. Maybe every time you hear the word dream, you know, the uh, second step for moving forward still includes that part of yourself that we call the inner child. And you're going to ask her to join you on the pursuit and fulfillment of your new dream once you've discovered what that new dream is. Now, I do want to encourage you uh, when you take the steps and take the time to figure out your new dream, do it. Let the adult you the grown up you, the eyes wide open you, let that one lead the way. If there are still some hurts inside of you that like, if you have certain hurts that made it so that you wanted that first dream to begin with, then you have to heal those hurts. You have to, or you're just going to keep going back to that old well. Okay. So once you've discovered what that new dream is, And it could be a variation of the old dream. I'm not saying it's got to be a completely different thing, but it's got to be in alignment with who you are today as an adult. Ask that inner child part of you to join you on the pursuit and the fulfillment of the new dream. Make it a game that y'all play together. Every time you do something towards it, include, you know, your younger self. And then the third step is ask your higher self for connection, guidance, and insight as you discover a dream or goal that reflects your interests and hopes today. So I kind of gave you those out of order and I didn't mean to, sorry about that. But you actually probably, uh, that's mm, maybe I didn't give them to you out of order because I do feel that you need to heal wounds before you can connect with your higher or highest self. So this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give you freedom. Choose whatever order 
you want for doing these three steps. But these are three steps for moving forward. You also don't have to do all three of them. Maybe one of them will suffice. Ah, maybe one of them will suffice for you. But that third one, I'm going to say it again because it was lengthy. It was a mouthful. Ask your higher self for connection, guidance, and insight as you discover a dream or goal, a dream or a goal that reflects your interests and hopes today. Your higher self is your most enlightened self, your most ascended self. I tend to be of the belief that that self is part of the soul and so always present, even if we are not consciously living as that higher self yet. And so because it's part of the soul, our soul, we always have access to it. And we can turn to that higher self for guidance in the same way that we turn to any other spirit guides or deities that we may belong believe in okay you guys this is my longest episode so far um i think no 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 that replay of the victory round was longer that was an hour long show speaking of i think i'm gonna go and watch their broadcast right now victory round airs every friday at one o'clock on instagram their um instagram handle i believe is at victory round it is hosted by my friend Kay ross and it is a uh, live show where viewers are encouraged to celebrate their successes for the week and the hosts Kay ross and dewan glover help you celebrate they clap for you if you're someone who doesn't have people in your life who clap for you tune into my friend's show Every Friday at one o'clock, you'll be able to type in your success for the week and they will clap for you. In the meantime, uh, thank you for being here with me for Not So Average with Sean Wilson, episode, I believe, 16. Don't quote me on that. Y'all, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I never know what episode it is. <laughs> I say that every time. I'm like, episode, I think it's episode, da 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 da. I don't know. Uh, I hope you're still finding edification from it. I hope it is encouraging you. I hope it's fun for you. And I hope you laugh a little too, because in my heart, I'm a comedian. I just happen to have some wise shit to say because I've been through a lot of stuff. If you have not already subscribed or followed, it's going to be different depending on what platform you listen to the show on. If you have not already subscribed or followed to Not So Average, please be sure to do show, uh, do so. That way you can always know when there is a new episode waiting for you. Also, comments and questions are welcome. Put those in the comment section of whatever platform you listen to. I also put in every episode's show notes, some resources to help you with whatever the topic was for that week. Look out for those below. A lot of times there are links to uh, resources that are products like books, CDs, other forms of audio uh, available for you on Amazon and Audible. I had that long pause there because for a second I couldn't remember which one needed to come first. Doesn't matter. Amazon, Audible, there are resources there for you. I have the links below in the show notes as well. I am now currently an Etsy seller and an Etsy affiliate. So some of the links will be Etsy links. Some of them will take you right to my shop where you will find, again, resources for you to help you pursue your dreams. That's what I got for you people. Thank you for being here and I will see you next week. Aren't my theme songs fun? I found them at Purple Planet Music. You can find music for your projects there too. Just go to purple-planet.com.